Today was a big day for Disney Lorcana as the official set is here for Into the Inklands. Over in the Disney Lorcana Discord server, fans joined together to play a guessing game to get the final 27 cards revealed. It was a wild and fun time, and the Illuminary Gazette has collected all of the revealed cards, so let's talk about them. Hey guys, Teddy here with the Glimmer Gang and the Illuminary Gazette, and we finally have the full set for Into the Inklands. Feels like it's a very long time coming. But let's just get right into these cards. We're just going to go in set order for the final cards we got. The first one is Blue Von Brunwald, D13, 3 cost, uninkable, in Amber, 0 strength, real power with 1 lore, Dreamborn Hero, Bodyguard. When this character is banished, gain 2 lore, and that is let's make like a tree. It's nice, I think. Obviously, uh, Bodyguards, we've seen how strong they can be. But I don't like the card, personally. I think there's other things you're going to be wanting to play on 3 in Amber, like... Ariel Singer, uh, that's just the first thing that comes to the top of my head. I like the, I like how it works. I think it could be interesting in limited, but that zero strength is just putting me off with this card because in any setting right now, it feels like we're heading into more like a challenge matters format and having zero strength is just not a good thing. So I like the artwork. It's cool, but in competitive play, I don't see this seeing much of it all, uh, the board in Lorcana. Now the next card we have is Minnie Mouse, musical artist, two costed inkable, one strength, two willpower with one lore, dreamborn hero. She is singer three and entourage. When you play a character with bodyguard, you may remove up to two damage from chosen character. So maybe if you're going for like a healing archetype, you want to be able to take damage off of a lot of things. We've seen uh, how good bodyguards can be, like I just said, with the blue. Uh, maybe a little synergy with these two first cards, but there's a lot of other bodyguards. We have uh, both, or all the musketeers. We have the prince, uh, Simba. So if you are if you want to build a bodyguard Amber Steel deck, you have the pieces, and I think this helps, and I, I wouldn't mind it. I think... Uh, I don't think it's going to be that good in Limited, just because Singers aren't that great in Limited, unless you build that package. But Minnie Mouse, Music Artist, this art is beautiful. Uh, good card, I think. We'll have to see a little play if there is a Bodyguard Matters deck that comes along. The next card we have is Mr. Snoop's Inept Businessman. Six costed, inkable, four strength, eight willpower, two lore, just a big fat body. Basically what this is, two lore is nice, I think. And this being a common, you'll be able to get this pretty easily. So depending on how your higher pulls are in a limited or draft scenario, this could see play up there because eight strength is just hard to uh, get rid of. Now that we've seen the full set, we know there's not much hard removal in it. So it's going to be a race to the top. And if you're able to get this down on six, eight strength with two lore, by that point, you're maybe around 10-ish lore. I think this can be a really good closer. I think this is good for limited. Regular play won't see play at all, I don't believe. And we have another Magic Broom. This one is the Big Sweeper from Fantasia. Three costed, inkable, one strength, five willpower with one lore, dreamborn, and a broom, obviously. Clean sweep. When this character is at a location, it gains plus two strength. Obviously, we got the uh, location that cares about brooms this set. So if you want to build a broom deck, Amethyst Steel Broom Deck, it's there. The pieces have been given to us this set. I'm interested to build it. There's a lot of different stuff uh, with these new typings. We see vanillas. Uh, we'll get into a card that cares about titans in a few minutes. Um, brooms, obviously. So lots of different archetypes to build around with these uh, typings. And I'm excited because it feels like that's been a piece of Lorcana that's been missing. And it's kind of just been like, a hey, okay, play the best cards. Everything goes into these decks. And yes, that is point of the TCG. But now that we are able to see more of these different archetypes come out, I like it a lot. I am very excited to see uh, what it may bring. We also got Magic Carpet, Flying Rug, two costed, inkable, and amethyst, two strength, one power with one lore, storeborn ally, evasive, and find the way. Exert, move a character of yours to a location for free. Well, if you are wanting to play locations, this is not bad. I actually kind of do like this in Limited just because it has evasive for one Two, there are some locations that cost a little bit more to move to, like the RLS Legacy. I think it's the highest move cost at three. Uh, but if you're just able to move a character to a location for free instead of having to pay that cost as one of your moves, especially in limited format, I like it. I think for actual competitive play, again, locations are just going to have to be tested. It's how uh, this set is going to be 
a lot of testing is going to be going on. And if Magic Carpet makes the cut, I would love it, but I would not be surprised if it kind of is just me like a one or a two of if you really want to get your cards locations at a certain point in the game. All right, so the next card we have is Rafiki Mystical Fighter, a one cost inkable, zero strength, two willpower with one lore, challenger plus three, which is amazing in and of itself. And then ancient skills, whenever he challenges a hyena character, this character takes no damage from the challenge. That really doesn't matter because we have one hyena in Shenzi and Emerald and... Well, hey, Shenzi is a good card, I do believe. This won't see play for that matter. I think this is actually not a bad card in Limited just because of the Challenger 3 on turn 1. 3-2, turn 1. Great, I love that. I hear you know, uh, Ancient Skills. That really doesn't matter at this point. Challenger 3, though, watch out for this in those uh, formats where you need to be able to take out cards early. Now, this is the card I mentioned earlier that cares about Titans. This is Stratos, Tornado Titan. Five costed, inkable, four strength, four willpower with evasive, cyclone, exert, gain lore to equal the number of Titan characters you have in play. This is good for limited. And if you are building a Titan deck, two scenarios. Uh, four, four evasive is not bad at all in limited. And obviously, if you do get other Titans, you'll be able to up that lore count, but still that exertion and 441 evasive, not bad at all. I like this card. The art is really cool. You can see it's just kind of like whirling together uh, Olympus and all that. So really good art, nice limited ability. I know I mentioned a lot of these cards are going to be good and limited, I believe. Uh, but yeah, straight off Tornado Titan, the final Titan that we have. We get another queen next, Hateful Rival, three costed inkable. 4-3 for one more. Dreamborn, Villain, Queen, Sorcerer. So a lot of keywords there, but again, Vanilla. Yeah, there's really nothing much to say about this card. Nice art. I really do like it. It looks like she's brewing some potions, but yeah. Just a good old Vanilla, the Queen. And uh, yeah, that's that. This next card I do really like. Just kind of like more of a deep cut. Not a deep cut, but something you wouldn't think about off the bat. Treasure Guardian, Protector of the Cave, being the Cave of Wonders. It's Storyborn, 4 costed uninkable six six four two who disturbs my slumber this character can't challenge or quest is at a location that makes sense theoretically that makes sense with it protecting the cave of wonders i think it would have been nice to like if we got a cave of wonders location this set that they could move there but we didn't which is okay we'll probably get it in a future set i would bet but yeah i like this card just because it's big and bulky it's a nice unink i think it's an uninkable candidate for limited if you are able to load the deck with some locations but other than that i don't think uh this sees much play right now unless again we see locations become prevalent but treasure guardian i like the concept behind it i still think we need to see more from locations before this is truly known on how good it is the next card we have is the lamp it's an item in amethyst two costed uninkable good or evil banish this item if you have a character named jafar in play draw two cards if you have a character named Genie in play, return a chosen character with four or less to their player's hand. So if you have both of them in play, theoretically you're drawing two cards and returning a character with cost four or less back to their player's hand. If you have one, then you're only doing the one effect. I do sort of like it. I'm hesitant because I don't know. It, it's good in like a stories format, obviously. You have Jafar, Genie, the Lamp, and all that in there. But just then again... Like these specific cards with only having three sets so far, these aren't going to be fully fleshed out. I mean, they have, or kind of said they have six sets already in the works and probably more at this point. They said six when set one was coming out. So they probably are thinking about 2025 20, sets at this point. So yeah, cool ability for like a stories format, but just right overall, not the greatest in competitive play. I'm excited to see if this does see any play in the future though, once we get more Jafar and Genie cards. Moving into Emerald, we have Friar Tuck, Priest of Nottingham, four costed, inkable, two four for two lore, you thieving scoundrel. When you play this character, the player or players with the most cards in their hand chooses and discards a card. Great in multiplayer, we've seen Emerald can be really good in multiplayer with cards like Pack Tactics. I do really like this. Emerald Steel in multiplayer seems like a very good archetype. I don't think it sees play in regular 1v1, but if you are looking to build a multiplayer deck with more cards we have now, Fire Tuck is a great inclusion into a deck like that. We only had two more cards to go in Emerald, and the other one is Starlight Vile. This is actually straight from the world of Lorcana, four-costed uninkable item. 
Efficient energy, exert, you pay two less for the next action you play this turn. Trap, pay two, banish this item, draw two cards, then choose and discard a card. So you're paying less for an action, you banish it, you have to draw two cards, but then you have to discard something. I don't like it. It just seems like too much going on at once where, like, I would play the Friar Tuck over this, if I'm being honest. You get a body on board, two lore on that Tuck is great. Well, I do like seeing new cards from the World of Lorcana. I wish this card was better in that regard. But Starlight Vial, unless we see Actions Matters decks start to arise, I don't think this sees much play, unfortunately. I would love it to see play, but then again, it's just, it, I don't think it has a place in the meta at this point in time. Moving into Ruby with a vanilla to start us off. Billy Bones, Keeper of the Map, 5 costed, inkable, 6-5 for 1. Like I said, just a vanilla a big body for limited, but other than that, just a common filler. Nice character, though. I think this is uh, something that I don't think people were rather expecting to be in this set. But again, just vanilla, plain and simple. Nice card to get and just goes into your bulk box at the end of the day, I think. Now, this card is one I think a lot of people were waiting for. Madame Medusa, the boss. Sick costed, uninkable, 4-4 four, four for 1, sore and villain. That terrible woman, when you play this character, banish chosen opposing character with three strength or less. Kind of like Tremaine. Obviously, you only can do uh, characters with three costs or less, but you get to choose, which is really nice. I think this may be slept on. I think this is a card that we is meta-dependent because if there are a lot of aggro decks being played, then Madame Medusa can be put into decks to combat that. But if it is more bigger decks that are being played, then... When I say bigger, I mean bigger strength, bigger willpower, stuff like that. Mana Medusa doesn't have a spot, but I do like it if aggro or just go wide decks find a place in the meta, which I think they do. So keep Mana Medusa in the back of your mind if those decks start to take over the format. And the third and final card in Ruby is On Your Feet. Now, four costed uninkable action, ready all characters and deal one damage to each of them. They can't quest for the rest of this turn. So basically it's saying quest with all your characters, make sure they're not about to die and only have one health left. Play On Your Feet now, and then you can wipe the board uh, in challenges if you wanted to. I don't know about this card. I mean, it is really nice to be able to ready everything because you can ready everything and basically say, nope, you can't challenge me next turn. Uh, it's a good win condition, I think. You quest with everything, say like you need four more, and you know if they challenge into you, then you are going to like not win, essentially. This is a good card for those situations where you just need to say keep your characters alive for one more turn. It's a very specific scenario where I think this card is used, but I don't actually mind it at all. I really like it. I'm going to be trying to put it into decks. That one damage is okay. I think we have cards that when things are damaged, like Hydra, for example, benefits off of this. So I'll say again, keep this in the back of your mind as a card that we could see play, even though it may not look the best off the bat. All right, time for Sapphire. We have Captain Amelia, first in command, three costed inkable, storyborn, alien captain, one strength, five willpower with one lore, Discipline during your turn, this character gains evasive. I don't like it because it only has one strength. Even with evasive, it feels, it just doesn't feel good. Hitting for one strength. When you have five willpower, yes, it might take a few things to run into it, but it's just, that one strength is not good. It, as much as I wanted this card to be good, even in, like if this was even two or three strength, and limited, it would be great. If it was two, then I would love this card. But one, like, what are you really going to be hitting? So great character, not on a great card, unfortunately. We have a new Floodborne uh, line right here. Kit Cloud Kicker Spunky Bear Cub and Kit Cloud Kicker Navigator. The one cost just honestly sucks. Zero one ward, like, <laughs> I can't see any reason you play this. But the uh, Floodborne is actually not bad. Six costed, inkable, two, five, four, three lore. Three lore is always great. Shift three, so getting a three cost or a three lore character down on shift three is great. Ward, obviously, can't really do much uh, in limited aspect. If you are able to get like two sets of these, so like a two, two line, because it is a common and uncommon, so there is the opportunity. I think it would be nice in limited, but 
I just can't get behind this baby kit. Like zero one, that is just killer in any format. And Ward, like I said, doesn't really do much in limited, but the three lore is nice. So if you are like, willing to say, okay, I have this baby kit that is going to do nothing for me unless I can get a big kit, then yes, play it. But you can also play the big kit as just a closer on turn six to drop down a three lore character with a respectable willpower that will take probably one or two hits to take out. Next card we have is Pluto, Mickey's Clever Friend, just a vanilla. Uh, I like this in limited, I guess. I don't know. It's a nice body. Four willpower isn't bad, but again, it's just there are other options I think you want to play. Especially in limited, you want to find cards that do stuff when you play them or have more lore. So something like this doesn't really entice me. I'm curious to know what he's mad about because his flavor text said it was his job to keep Gustav's attention away so Minnie could get to the cave. Is it the Minnie that we saw in the water going to that cave? Is it a different cave? Who knows? Little story piece here, but again, just in filler card, I think. But it's Pluto, so you gotta love the dog. Next one, though, this art is phenomenal. Uh, the Queen Mirror Seeker, another queen. Uh, again, Stormborn villain, queen sorcerer. Four costed, inkable, two strength, five willpower with one lore. Calculating in vain when this character quests, you may look at the top three cards of your deck and put them back in any order. So just some nice reorganization. I actually do like this Unlimited just because you're looking for sometimes so specific cards to get you to a point. If you need to find a bomb and you have something on the top of your deck that you need next turn, I like this. It's an uncommon, so it'd be easier to get. I like the ability, and obviously five strength or five willpower is nothing to mess with, and you can get a few quests off of this. So look out for this and limit it. I think it is going to be a good card, and obviously that art is, like I said, phenomenal. I'm gonna try to get a play set of these, even though they might not be playing actual uh, competitive play, but I do like this card overall. I will give it a higher rating for sure. We have Heart of Tefiti next, an item in Sapphire. Three costed inkable, create life, exert, pay two, put the top card of your deck into your inkable face down, and exerted. So more ramp. Sapphire loves their ramp. As we can see, we have so many options now. I like this. This is inkable, but I honestly would rather play Fishbone Quill. I don't want to have to pay two to put something in. Yes, you have, for Fishbone Quill, you are taking card out of your hand. This is just going from the top of your deck. So maybe there's some testing there to see, but I would much rather just be able to play something with Fishbone Quill into my, just into my inkwell from my hand and then use my rest of my ink to play probably Haram, uh, which is the item loving character. So I like the concept of it. Don't think it's that good though, just because you have to pay two, which seems very steep for something like this. We did get our final location. It's only vanilla, but it is a very good vanilla, I think. Four cost at Inkable. McDuck Manor, Scrooge's Mansion. One move cost, nine willpower. That's big. I mean, that is huge. And two passive lore. I think this is probably the best location in Limited. It's up there with some of the best locations in the game, I think. Even though it doesn't really do anything, it's still getting you two passive lore. And you get to, and it's going to stay on the field for a turn or two. Nine willpower, you're going to have to attack with like, probably like a Maui or in something with three strength. This is going to take two or three characters just off the top of my head to take out. Yeah, this is really good, I think. I think behind the Queen's Castle, this may be the second best uh, location. Obviously, like I said so many times in these Gazette videos, we don't really know how good locations are until we test with them, until we play with them. But from what I've seen, they're not bad. And McDuck Manor just shows that these can be good without abilities on them. Getting into the final ink of the video, we have Gustav the Giant, Terror of the Kingdom, three costed, inkable, six, six for one, all tied up. This character enters play exerted and can't ready until the start of your turn. Break free during your turn. Whenever one of your other characters banishes another character in a challenge, you may ready this character. Truthfully, I don't know how good or bad this card is going to be. I do think that that all tied up ability is just interesting because obviously you have this coming in pretty early at three and it is a big, big body, but you can't do anything with it until your next turn because it comes into play exerted and it can be the target of an attack from other from your opponent. So obviously if they see this come down, they may go after it, but it's going to take out anything early. So I don't think it's a bad, that ability isn't bad. It doesn't really play into much in limited, 
Break Free is a kind of ability where you want to play this at the start of your turn and then banish something else so you ready this. I think this card is not bad and limited. I don't think it's used playing regular play, but a lot of the cards we've seen today, a lot of rares we've seen today, obviously, are not are going to be somewhat playable and limited, I think. It just depends on kind of the archetype you decide to build around. We got a new Mickey Mouse card. Always got to get the Mickeys. Stalwart Explorer. Three-costed, inkable, dreamborn hero, 3-3 three, three for one. Let's take a look. This character gets plus one strength for each location you have in play. So if you want to flood the board with locations, Mickey is going to become a big body. Other than that, I don't know how good this card is. Again, it's just a common, so obviously they're not going to be that great. Again, maybe a good card for limited with 3-3, three, three, but I, again, I think this just... It has a very specific need in its ability. I don't know how many locations are going to be played in 40, but that seems like too much. So yeah, I am not entirely sold on this card. I think it could be good if we see a deck that runs a solid amount of locations. I think we saw the mini that was like released at the way of the beginning of the set that gets plus two strength of being a location. So both the Steel Mickey and Mini in this set care about locations. But again, we just have to see how good locations are before we can really test and see how good the characters that care about locations are in the meta. We have Mufasa, Champion of the Pride Lands. It is only vanilla, but seven cost of ink. Well, three strength and 10 willpower and three lore. This is a closer and limited, I think. I don't think this is playing actual competitive play, but again, like I've said, the theme of this, these reveals are good limited cards. 10 willpower is nothing to mess with. And if you get this down, it's going to take a hot sec for them to deal with it. And you're going to get two possibly three quests off of this. So it's nine lore off of one card, more or less six. So yeah, good limited card right here. Really good limited card. And obviously it's a rare. So you have a good shot at getting this for one of your decks. Now, the second to last card we have is Pyros Lava Titan, five costed inkable, five, four for one. Eruption, during your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you may ready chosen character. It doesn't even matter if it's a Titan. This is just unconditional ready chosen character and they can do whatever they want. So you got a Mickey BLT with four lore on the field. Challenge and defeat something with Pyros. Ready that up. And you are questing for eight. And this is a very underrated card at the moment. I think it is going to be good. Just because it doesn't matter if it's a Titan. You and you can't do anything you want after another character is ready. So you can sing. You can challenge. You can quest. You can do a lot of things. Pyros the Lava Titan is a good card. It will be played, I believe. I'm going to be throwing it into my Steel X just because I do really like that ability. I think it works well with Steel Song and be able to sing things over and over again during a turn. And the final card we got, the final card in Into the Inklands, besides the new enchantments that we are still yet to see, but the final card in the base set is Residual Palace card. Two cost, one strength, three will for one lore, Stormborn ally captain. Looky here, while this character has no damage, he gets plus two. So a three, three at the start of a limited game isn't bad. Like I said, a like, a lot of these cards are good and limited. They will see play in limited. Obviously, this isn't a card I don't think that's going to see much play in regular competitive because obviously it's a common. I mean, so we, we've seen cards like Benja see play, but that's because there are items everywhere. But that is a very specific card. Razul Palace card. Good in uh, early games of limited. But other than that, I don't think it will see play. And that was edition six of the Luminary Gazette. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We have the full set. Lots of things to test with. Lots of new things to see how they work. But that was the episode. I hope you all enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button. Like, tell us what your favorite card is in the entire set. And we'll talk soon. Thanks for watching, everyone.